so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Mm, yo, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> okay, yes. Football therapy, mate. With me, your host, Jan. How's it going? Celtic absolutely slapped up. Chelsea Football Club in a pre-season friendly 4-1, a consolation penalty to the Blues for lo lots of goals, lots of goals for Brendan Rodgers Celtic who look ready to go, ready to go, um, <laughs> we look really unfit and we don't look anywhere near it, there, lots of, there are talking points in this game, I'm looking at the attacking momentum of this. I'll sh I might show you in a second. And Chelsea had a lot of attacking momentum. For whatever that's worth, mate. Um, yeah, man. Ha thanks for joining me. I stayed up to watch the game because I wanted to talk about it. And I love watching... I have to watch my team get touched up. Still, if you want to make me feel better, drop a like on the video. And why not subscribe if you want to? Uh, hit the bell if you choose to. Let's talk Chelsea. Look, context. Celtic look ready to go. I think they start their season quite soon. They took Man City apart in, in, a, in a bit of a bit of a barn burner, but apparently they were well worth their win and more. Uh, and <laughs> just for the first five minutes of this football match against Celtic sold me dreams, bro. We could have been like three or four nil up, and we're going to talk about. Oh, don't, we are going to talk about the Chelsea defenders. Don't you worry, guys. Um, but yeah, the first few minutes sold me dreams. I was like, oh my god, we're going to win this eight nil and win the Premier League. Uh, little did I know, in the 79th minute, we'd be four nil down. Um, it is preseason. We don't look fit. Celtic look ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna criticize heavily because it's a football match and we can do that. But uh, before I get into it, I just want to offer that um, context. You know, anyone who gets too too wound up by a preseason friendly, it's silly. I'm not saying you're silly, but I, I feel like it's a silly thing, you know? So let me just quickly pull this up. I should have got it ready before. Here we go. So this is uh, Sofa Score. Um, this is the lineup and stuff. Uh, also, look at this bar here. Let me just move this over. Here. So the green is the Chelsea attacking momentum. And the blue slash purple is the Celtic attacking momentum. And pretty much we've got it a lot. We don't do anything with it. And as soon as they bar that like early period here, as soon as they got it, they score. Attacking momentum goal. Attacking momentum goal. Attacking momentum goal goal. Which shows you that... Um, they're, and they're not a reactionary team so much, Celtic. They're really good on the break, but they do want to keep the ball as well. So we did well at times, right? But my word, we didn't. Like, the defending was so so poor, real poor. Um, it was not good. You can see our highest rated players here: Kunku, uh, Bergstrom, Bergstrom, go away! I'm not taking that seriously at all. Um, lineups. Let's have a look here. As you can see, four three three from Brendan Rodgers. Um, impressive, impressive Celtic. Uh, I mean, it, bas it's, it lists Chelsea as a back three. It isn't really, because Reece, I mean, he inverts, but how often do you see Reese James in the right back position? Not much. It's almost like they're just practicing the in-possession shape at times. But uh, Rob Sanchez in goal, and yeah, I'm going to talk about player performances. Rob Sanchez did a few good things in this game, and then just went mental again. Um, by the way, we've had the here we go for Philip Jorgensen, so we'll talk about that in the Chelsea News video moving forwards. Um, all the defenders were friggin' terrible. Um, I mean, they've given Wesley like a, a relatively okay rating here. But Levi's under 6'5", and Benoit Badishu, absolutely awful. Worth mentioning now, actually, that this game was of such... I've never seen... I've never seen such a display of terrible crossing from everyone. 
And Kunku, like, did one of the worst crosses I've ever seen. Lavia was doing it, and he's meant to be able to pass well. Um, Badia Shield just passed the ball out of touch. Um, Madway, everyone, man, everyone just couldn't pass a football. It was peculiar, bro. Like, it was hella, hella weird. Let's run you through the goals quickly. So, we start really well, Chelsea. Uh, and then they score in the 19th minute and the 33rd minute. Um... The second goal, the 33rd goal to put them 2-0 up, was very much just a break past, literally passed it behind our back line. I said this on my social media, dude. You could literally have moon, in that, especially in that first half, you could have moonwalks behind Chelsea's back line in slow motion. You know, and uh, they would have, you would have had no issue getting back there, mate. Out of the, after the first five minutes of that exciting, scintillating Chelsea attack, that led to nothing we decided to open up the brothel at the back we opened up a brothel in our own defensive third and anyone can come down and score come on come on down don't worry about it it was it was peak <laughs> Um, the first goal is actually quite a good goal by Celtic. The pre-assist and the assist is a good move. Granted, um, what's his face? Uh, O'Reilly is left in acres. Someone should be pick. I think Badishul should be picking him up, and he's nowhere near him. Um, and uh, but but it is a good move. And, and look, Chelsea were really bad at a lot of things in this game. But I do want to be mindful to um to praise Celtic because they looked like a good outfit when they were at, were at the ball and they were suffering they were fine um, they did live a, char a bit of a charmed life like, I'm looking at the ratings uh, the team ratings here and they're pretty even but like they did leave the goal look let's be fair the Celtic goal lived a charmed life at times okay um with the, lots of changes a couple of well not loads of changes three changes at half time um actually I should just, let's just do the lineups properly again so, we started like this. Sanchez, the terrible three at the back. And you guys know me. I'm a massive fan of Cole and Fofana. But it was a terrible performance from everyone. Uh, Reese James and Lavia in the midfield. It's kind of... With, with Nkunku, Kani Chukwameka, Noni offering the width, Mikalo offering the width, and Gyu. Um, really interesting, actually, uh, with Nkunku playing like a sort of midfielder at times. Um not as a left winger at all, of course, because the whip's coming from the actual wingers. So, and he's not really playing as a sort of, sort of as a number ten. But this, this, what they've done here, this three four two one, this doesn't reflect of uh, so much. Let's look at his heat map actually. Yeah, so you can see his heat map there. So yeah, he's kind of like an inside left ten. Um, I do want to talk about Mark Gu in a moment. Let's just look at Gu's heat map. Very very central, up and down. Um, yeah, I do want to talk about Gu in just a moment. But um. Yes, lots of changes, lots of changes, um, loads of Celtic changes, the 2 0 up, and then they scored two goals in quick succession. Um, <laughs> loads of mental moments from bit like Sanchez running out, doing all kinds of stuff. Sanchez passes the ball to the opposition. No, it's Badia Shield passes the ball to the opposition, and um, and they score just and they carve us open again and they're, they're just basically really really bad defending um of course sterling later on wins a um a, a penalty which in kunku steps up and converts nice that in kunku has got two games two goals in pre-season one of the rare um situations here player statistics because they're players oh, that's probably gonna be depressing isn't it um okay so let's just quickly look at the match statistics here um, first half, 52% possession, second half, 63, so maybe, um, yeah, we were slightly better in the second half, Chelsea, that we only had one big chance in the first half, despite all that attacking momentum, um, and they had three, and then we had two, two apiece, 12 shots to their five in the second half, in terms of the whole game, um, yeah, we had majority of possession, which is what you'd expect from an Enzo Maresca side. Um, they created more big chances than us, <laughs> compared to most of them. Um, we had 23 shots to their 14. You know, we had a few woodworks. We had 11 corners to their two. Like, there was momentum and attack in their defensive third, but they won't give a F, mate, because they absolutely slapped us up. Um... Yeah, man. I'm going to talk to you guys about player performances. Now, it's very difficult to 
clearly the players are a not that fit yet, especially compared to the opposition, and b they are. This is the second preseason game with a new manager and a radically different style of football, and actually quite like a niche um, philosophy in many ways with Maresca, his famous idea. I don't get the idea yet, but like we'll see, we'll see, right? So Sanchez is just I'm again. No, I mean, he made a good save. He had a couple of good clearances and then he just went mental. And I know bad issue will pass the ball for the, to the opposition for that goal. But it wasn't the, I mean, it wasn't the greatest pass from Sanchez. I know you could argue that defenders need to be ready for these risky passes. That's what Mariska wants. He wants the goalkeeper to give it to the defenders in mental scenarios. Because if you get through that press, then you're in a bit more high value situation as you play through the lines, right? But, like, we played a really high line in this game. It was really set up very, very high. I know that's in vogue. I know Ange Postacoglu is just who we are, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what everyone loves. And maybe at times it will work, but we clearly aren't equipped to execute it yet. The defenders um, don't have a chemistry yet at all. Uh, and it's all embryonic. It's all sort of in, you've got the teething issues of early stage development of a new side. Fine, fine, fine preseason. But we have to still comment on what we saw. And that was a real lack of cohesion uh, from defenders playing together and a really naive high line at time with an often crazy goalkeeper. Enough stuff to give us all heart attacks. We thought the heart attacks are gone. They're back, baby. Um... Let's talk about performances then. Mudrick didn't look like, you know, I saw that clip on social media of Mudrick doing all the, the flair keepy ups and tricks. And I'm like, wow, what a skillful baller. And, you know, everyone joking about him. Is he secretly Brazilian and all this kind of stuff? We just haven't, he wasn't in, we haven't found a way to get him into this game. He hasn't found a way to play the game. Uh, Noni Madweke, his counterpart on the other side, he saw loads of the ball. Uh, and, you know, the commentators were well, on the memes I was watching were talking about how he's such a threat all the time yeah he saw a lot of the ball and there's credit to that you make yourself available but I just frustrated he frustrated Nonny I don't want to dig him out personally because he's not like the only one see so Reese James on the sofa score got a high rating here um, he's alright Reese James look pff. In terms of what I'm seeing in front of me, in terms of this Maresca ball, it doesn't look like Reese James is making everything tick like we're going to win. Because he's playing, it's, but this whole inverted fullback things, all I'm seeing is Reese James just playing in midfield. Literally. Like, I'm going to look at his heat map now. Um, yeah, he, ne he never is in the right back position. He's in the midfield. Um, uh, he's in the midfield and then he gets forward a little bit out to the right, but he doesn't actually defend the, the right, which is, I guess, fine. But like, and I'm not saying he can't do it. I think Reese James is incredibly talented, maybe Chelsea's best player. And if you want to protect your best player, who's injury prone, you play him in centrally. You don't play him at right back, conventional right back. So I get it. I'm not saying I don't want it. I, I do want it. It's something that we all called for when we saw Maresco was hired. And then when he's been training in midfield, we all got excited. I'm not saying it's not going to work, but it didn't look like it was that influential in this. Similarly, Romeo Lavia, of course, he's partnering Reese James quite a lot. I wonder if this is the plan. Well, I mean, Caicedo and Fernandez are going to return, right? But the thing is, um, with Lavia, he's played under Maresca in the City Academy. He knows all about him. I haven't seen anything really from Lavia yet. I know he's a good player. I know he's a highly talented player. He's really rated. He's one of Joe Shields' boys, like a Cole Palmer. Um, and he's young, and you know Liverpool wanted him, and so I'm I'm happy we've got him. Let's hope he does bits, and he's part of the next you know, generation of Belgium after the golden generation, you know, with Jeremy Doku and all that. So I'm glad that he's a Chelsea player. He's a good player, but I'm yet to see anything particular from him. Yeah, I've spoken about the wide players, Mudrick, Anonymous, Madweke, disappointing. Um, and then Carney Chuck Wemeka, he can be really effective. I said on my Instagram that if you play him in a conventional 4-2-3-1, make him just play in the hole behind the striker and, you know, do tight combinational play. He's very good with the ball tight to his feet and he's got quite a strong frame and he's te technical in combinational play. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess out of the two, and Kunku was more effective. Uh, even though if he frustrated moments in Kunku, he wayward shots, a point in this overhead kick that was never on for him, um, a terrible cross, so these like, highlights, and a, a good penalty, and maybe a couple of good moments. Um, I, I do want to speak about Mark Gu. 
I know it's a bit like annoying. Everyone's just waxing lyrical about him. Um, and look, is he the kind of striker you want in the box if you're going to put crosses in to occupy big, strong Premier League centre backs? I'm not so sure, but I think he's got so much to his game. His dynamism, his work rate, his um, his runs in behind, incredible. His um, he's got good hold up play. He's got the way he uses his body is really, really impressive, and we've seen that a few times now. The way he turns his back on the opposition to 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 push them over without fouling them, and and you know the way he plants his way so he can you know, hold the, it's not even just hold up, just, just where he moves, he reminds me of like Ruben Loftus-Cheek does that really well, um, through midfield and in the final third when he just turns his shoulders and like bats them off, um, Gigi's only 18 as well, really, really impressive with that, uh, we've seen him obviously the last game at Wrexham do that chest down to, to offer up that chance, he's doing like a wide array, uh, like a full repertoire of what a centre forward needs to do, making the runs in behind, combining well, going wide, going central, um, you know, not just playing off the shoulder, holding the ball up, using his body well, like I said, like knocking it down. He looks wicked. I, do, I don't want him going alone. I think we're short for strikers. Uh, I'd keep Mark Yu as well. I mean, let's have a look. We haven't seen him try to finish much. He's actually been quite good at reaction snatch shots that are really low value shots. You know, when the balls come to him late at the back post where it's not really a, hot, a, sh- a, a, a you know, hasn't sat for him nicely to take a shot. And again, happened today. Um, a ball that like, bounced onto his knee and he sort of like tries to shoot quickly. So they're really low value chances. So we haven't seen him have a proper go at a finish of a high value chance. But all the stuff in between looks very, very promising indeed. Uh, yeah, man. So what can you say, really? It just looks like they don't know what they're doing properly yet and they're not entirely fit. But Mark, you good. Everyone else bad <laughs> what do you guys think comment down below please let me know what you think i'll be very keen to learn what, uh, your feelings on the game it's just pre-season trying not to get too wound up man um and i will try and watch the other games in the morning um should they be available somewhere and then react to them or and of course um i'll be able to watch the inter game because that will be a f- 3 p.m. UK time or something. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And I uh, hope to see you back soon. Peace.